All right, we're verifying trigonometric identities here. We've run across a problem that looks pretty terrible. It's got fractions on both sides. Holy cow, which one do we start with? Anytime you are given fractions on both sides and you're trying to decide which side should be considered the complicated side, I would always suggest picking the side that has more than one term on the bottom. You see, this one over here, I could break up into two fractions. I could call that 1 over sine and sine over sine. And so that simplifies out pretty quickly. 1 over sine is cosecant. Sine over sine is 1. So this is the same thing as cosecant theta minus 1. That's easy to do. This over here, I couldn't do that one step in my head, just like I told you. So I would always pick the one that has more than one term on the bottom, and I would work with it. That would be my suggestion. Now, in order to do this, if I want to work with one side at a time, I need to know how to break this apart. And I really don't know where to start. So maybe because, only because I see cotangent squared, I'm going to go ahead and try the Pythagorean identity. One of them that I know is 1 plus cotangent squared of theta is equal to cosecant squared of theta. I've done enough of these by this point in time. If you're working on this problem, you've done some simpler problems, and hopefully you have that memorized. All right. So if that's true, that means that cotangent squared, I can rearrange this to say cotangent squared by itself then must be cosecant squared of theta minus 1. Yeah? So I'm going to replace then the left side with cosecant squared of theta minus 1 on top, 1 plus cosecant theta on the bottom. That must be equal to 1 minus sine theta over sine theta. All right. Now, I don't know if I'm any closer or not, but now what I see is on the top, I see, to me, a difference of squares. Cosecant squared is a perfect square. 1 is a perfect square. So I can factor the top. I'm going to factor that out as cosecant theta plus 1, cosecant theta minus 1. There's the numerator. On the bottom, I have 1 plus the cosecant of theta. Do you see now why I chose that? Look at these two terms. On the left side, on the right side, I have 1 minus sine theta still over sine theta. Now I'm only working it with one, with one side at a time. By the way, I should have stopped here. When you're verifying trigonometric identities, you need to work with one side of the equation at a time, which means we do not cross multiply. That is a big mistake. I have a lot of students that do that every year. You do not cross multiply when you're doing proofs like this. Okay. Thank you to our school for that lovely bell. On the left side, I'm not cross multiplying here. On the left side, what I see here is that these two terms go away. And I'm left with the cosecant of theta minus 1. I need to show that that is equal to 1 minus sine theta over sine theta. I'm working with only one side at a time. Right? So I stop at this point in time and I say, all right, I've got an easy thing on the left and I've got a complicated thing on the right. right? So what I'm going to do is it's okay to simplify this one a little bit and then to simplify this one a little bit as long as I'm only working with one side at a time. So I'm going to stop working with the left-hand side. I'm going to work with the right-hand side and see if I can break that down. So the left side, I'm going to write as two separate fractions because they only have one denominator, right? I have 1 over the sine of theta, and I have negative sine over the sine of theta. So I'm done with the left. I'm working on the right. And the reason that I've done this is because I know what 1 over the sine is. That's the same thing as cosecant. And I know what sine over sine is. That's just 1. And how about that? It turns out to be pretty simple. Kind of. Right? Once you get through these first few steps, everything falls into place in a hurry. So, once again, let's choose the side that has the tougher denominator, the one with multiple terms. Let's work with squares when we can. So I use Pythagorean identity and I replace that, and it turns out that that ends up being something that I can factor if it's squares. Let's try another example that's pretty similar. Okay? I look at these two. Which side am I going to start with? Probably the left. 
because it has two terms. And I'm also going to go through, and I know my Pythagorean identities by now, I know that tangent squared x plus 1 is equal to secant squared of x. So what is tangent squared by itself? Well, that's secant squared x minus 1, right? See a perfect square starting to show up already? So on the left-hand side, I have secant squared x minus 1 over 1 plus the secant of x. I've got to show that that's equal to 1 minus the cosine of x over the cosine of x. All right, so the top over here, I see a perfect square. I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. Secant x plus 1, secant of x minus 1. One step at a time. I'm not doing this all in my head because that's not the point of a proof. I'm showing every step of work along the way. The reason that I just did this because now that's a perfect square so I can factor it out. Why did I want to do that? Because conveniently the way the math book wrote the problem those terms go away. How about that? So I'm left with secant of x minus 1 on the left 1 minus the cosine all over cosine on the right. And so I say, okay, you know what, looking at these two sides, this right side is now going to be easier to, or tougher to work with, right? The right side is now the complicated side. So I'm going to start working with that. I'm going to break that up into two separate fractions. I have 1 over the cosine, and I have negative cosine over cosine as my second fraction. And that's pretty convenient because 1 over the cosine is secant. And cosine over cosine is 1. It all checks out. So there we go. There's two examples where I have fractions on both sides. Tricks of the trade. One, do not cross multiply absolutely against the rules. But what you can do when you're working one side at a time, start with the more complicated side that has more than one term on the denominator, the left here. And anytime you see a square, you can probably guess that you're going to end up using a Pythagorean theorem or identity, excuse me, to go ahead and rearrange that top equation. Then factor from there.